ladies and gentlemen, your host for tonight's conference and gala dinner awards event is Samantha Simmons. Samantha has had an impressive career as a journalist and broadcaster, spanning more than 20 years. She is currently presenting on BBC World News, where she covers international events of the day. Please give a warm welcome to Samantha Simmons. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome to you all this evening. It's wonderful to be here in these grand surroundings of this magnificent ballroom. I know so many of you have travelled far and wide to be here tonight, so give us a shout out if you've come all the way from Newcastle. What about from Manchester? Yay! Birmingham? There we go, lots of you from Birmingham. Uh, what about from Luton? Yay! And all of you who've travelled all the way from London and Essex, well done to you and warm welcome. I'd like to welcome you to tonight's Catering Circle Business Conference 2023. We're going to be hearing from special guests, industry leaders, as well as hosting some panel discussions. Tonight's business conference will celebrate the success stories and solutions found in the industry. Now, we couldn't have produced tonight, of course, without our amazing sponsors. We're also de delighted to be awarding the winner of our star show and two finalists. They have been battling it out for the past two years, and tonight we will hear who has won the prestigious star title. Please give a very warm welcome to the stage to Abdul Haik, Vice Chairman of Channel S and the founder of the Catering Circle. Good evening. Assalamu alaikum to our distinguished guests, colleagues and business owners. It's been long eight years of the Catering Circle. We have had seven years of live shows and one year of National Rose Show every two weeks. And yes, there is no stopping. We have done the Rose Show and hired over 1,000 restaurant plus, and they have given their interviews, told us their problems, and are looking for help. One of the main problem is menu pricing. This is no longer buying cost times three or buying cost times four. But it is what the customer is willing to pay. And that's what is count nowadays. Competition next door means customers have no choice, especially with old favorites, chicken tikka masala, that kind of dishes. One pay you the right price to make a profit or even survive. To solve this, you need to have a unique signature dish. We're talking about a creative dish with high GP of your next neighbor so they can compete with you. Catering Circle Star Shows, we're talking about Season 3, Star Show Season 7, Season 7 have created for you around 20 unique signature dishes. To be honest, we are on our knees. From Brexit, COVID, cost of living, high interest, inflation, that at 20% and even war. And the government thinks it is business as usual. We all need to stick together, do our bits and continue to love your MPs and find solutions and save the industry. Our forefathers work hard to create it for us. Let's feel proud and let's make the curry industry great again. Thank you. I feel thank you very much for kicking off tonight's event. So let's take a look at what the catering circle has been up to over the past eight years. In 2015, 10 national roadshows identified the issues across the UK.
2016, 12 live talk show found solutions to the catering crisis. In 17, 12 live restaurant talent shows highlighted success stories and found 12 winners. Dish competition. The Restaurant Star Show 2018. Channel S has taken a great initiative in 2015 and created a dedicated media platform, a voice for the catering industry. We as a community, we have to help ourselves work together. We have to be united. We can lobby so long as we are united. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the Restaurant Talent Show Season 4. Ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately he couldn't be with us tonight, but I'm delighted to share with you a message from the chairman of Channel S. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome everyone um, at this fantastic gathering this evening and also our community people watching around the nation and in different parts of the world. Today is a historic day. The journey began eight years ago when the catering industry was suffering tremendously in many areas. At times, it seems that we had no hope because we were falling behind in many areas, uh, from pricing to environmental issues and IT and other areas. So we decided to go around the nation. We went to at least 10 different cities in Britain and we identified the areas we needed to address. And thus, we started running episodes, shows on Channel S. We invited specialist people, we invited guests, caterers, 
uh, to find out the solution of the issues we were facing. And we were getting very successful on this. Unfortunately, then came COVID-19. COVID-19, uh, when it came, we were really nervous. But because of the resilience of the community, we survived. And then we decided to uh, start the show again. And today is the prime example of that. But unfortunately, now we are facing a new uh, challenge. The cost of living, the inflation and other issues. I feel that this evening will be beneficial to everyone and we'll find solution. And inshallah, if we stick together, then the community and the industry will survive. Thank you. Thank you for that message there. I'd like, now like to invite to the stage our two title sponsors, Meridian Grand and Purple Eye Technologies. Please welcome Mohammed Rahman, General Manager of Purple Eye Technologies, and Nikita Mulchandani, Managing Director of the Meridian Grand. Nikita, Mohammed, welcome to you. Great to see you both. Um, so, Nikita, let's start with you. Tell us a bit about why it's been so important for you to be involved with this industry. I think the catering industry, I mean, it's what fuels all of us, isn't it? Um, when we started Meridian Grand, we were very much venue only and we expanded into catering. And I think the joy of an event comes from the food. And this is what we realized. So if people come to an event and they don't have good food, they don't enjoy themselves. Uh, so catering has very much been our lifeblood. And we are actually very thankful for the influence of the Bangladeshi community because we are so blessed to have the support from this community and I'd like to thank everyone here today for their support of the venue of Meridian Grand. Thank you. Mohammed. Thank you. Mohammed, same to you. Why has it been so important for you to be involved with the curry industry? On a lighter note, I would say it's a great opportunity to see successful business people like you, um, people like Mr. Mubin, young, aspiring businessman, Mr. Elias, experienced businessman. On a serious note, I would say, Purple Eye is a software company, and we create software for the Indian Bangladeshi restaurant owners. We can make software for you. We can reduce your burden. We can increase your profit chances. We understand your business better like no other. So this is the great inspiration why we're involved in this project to understand and help the need of this community and this particularly restorators. Okay, thank you. Now please welcome to the stage tonight's platinum sponsors, RCI and BBCA. A warm welcome to Professor Dr. Sawa Chowdhury, Director of the RCI, and Salim Chowdhury, President of the BBCA. Welcome to you both. Hello, welcome. Good to see you both. So I want to ask you both, um, starting with you, why is the curry industry important to you and what are you doing to support it? Well, it's been the bedrock of our community for the last 50 years. But I think the demographics have changed, tastes have changed. I think like the pub industry, we've got to change as well. So I think I believe in the curry industry. This is what has made our community as strong as it has is given us a, a sense of security, sense of education, sense of progress. But I think there is a lot more to do within the curry industry to start to get back to our strength that we had in the 80s and 90s. Okay, thank you. Uh, same question to you. Uh, thank you, Samantha. I'm a second generation caterer. I think we've been a victim of our own success. We've made our daughters and sons, doctors, lawyers, barristers, and uh, in the process, the curry industry got left behind. But what the catering circle is doing is encouraging the younger generation to come forward and uh, take over. Okay, brilliant. Gentlemen, thank you both very much. Thank you. Now, let's take a look at how restaurants have saved thousands of pounds in commission against the online giants such as Just Eat, Deliveroo, and Uber Eats. manage to communicate with our customers by having a clear project six month timeline and in that six month timeline we marketed, leafleted and used our social media platform to announce the date of exit. In the meantime, in the background, 
We also worked with our web developers and Dynet to create the system, make test it and make sure it works for the date of launch. So in a nutshell, the key parts of this element would be to have a clear project timeline for communication and another timeline to ensure that your own website and app are stable and live and ready to take over. With those two key elements, we then proceeded and we've not looked back since 2017. For anyone um, wanting to set up their own online audio system, I would 100% recommend um, the commission that you would pay to Justine, you literally just use that um, to set up your own um, online ordering system. Um, it's very beneficial to your own business, you have full control um, of any promotions or anything like that. Um, and you just set up like a, a discount for your own customers. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's definitely recommend. Just some quick advice on how we benefited as a restaurant using the DineNet online ordering system. We first took in DineNet just pre-COVID. Um, this is when we took the best decision to move on to online ordering as well as our telephone ordering service. And we have benefited largely from the online ordering system. It has generated great revenue, which we haven't had the need to pass on to other firms such as Just Eat or Hungry House. Um, it's actually a no brainer. I mean, keep your profits in house and use that profit towards social media and in-house marketing, and that way you'll get the best results. Every business must need a website and apps. And I'm great, I have a Dynet website and apps, and you know, I'm saving thousands of pounds. Blueberries, Just Eat, uh, Deliveroo, they are there. So what you have to do, if you have your own website, own apps you can save thousands of pounds so you need your own website own apps hi my name is Golam Mobin owner of Montaz Fan Indian in Newmarket we marketed our Dynet ordering platform through our social media and we created our own app we do not use any other online jack Now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage our distinguished VIPs who will be handing out tonight's certificates. A warm welcome to Councillor Atikul Haq, Mayor of Salisbury, Councillor Jahed Chowdhury, Speaker at Tower Hamlets, and Dr. Shafi Ahmed, our e commerce expert. Welcome to you all. So please congratulate the top Dinet performers. First off, Mohi Sami Udin, who unfortunately can't be here tonight. Okay, we're going to move on to the next one. Fohad Hussein. Congratulations. Next up, Galam. Jelani Mobin. Now on to our next winner, Shamsul Hussain. Gentlemen, thank you all very much for your help, thank you. Now, the curry food industry is full of great stories, isn't it? History and background as well. To bring together these wonderful short stories from our fellow entrepreneurs. Let's watch this short video.
Now, the Catering Circle are really pleased to launch volume three of their Life Members book, where you can read all about industry members that have made a significant difference to the curry industry. Can I ask our VIP guests to come to the stage to launch the book? M. Dadul Haq Chowdhury, president of the London Bangla Press Club, and Dilara Khan, BBC WE. Welcome to you. Those were some seriously well-wrapped books there. A bit of a struggle to uh, get that wrapping paper and string off. Thank you very much for that. Now, welcome Taz Chowdhury, Managing Director of Channel S TV to the stage. Assalamu alaikum. Good evening, all. Hope you're all enjoying the evening so far. What a lovely evening it's been. Well, congratulations to our Vice Chair, Abdul Haq, and his team for the eighth year of running this program successfully. Uh, on behalf of Channel S, I'd like to extend um, our congratulations to all the winners and the participants, and of course, all the success stories of 2023. Uh, we hope to continue supporting the community, especially for the catering industry, which is obviously one of the um, uh, main bread and butter of our community, British Bangladeshi community, since we came to this country. Uh, which I suppose has been almost 50, 50, 60 years now. So let us all continue to support this. Thank you all for coming. Channel S will obviously be here to support Catering Circle and all the uh, people who participate in the catering industry. Thank you so much. Now, the executive members of the Catering Circle have come up with a couple of solution videos which we will be playing throughout the evening. These videos have all been directed by Mahboob Reza Chowdhury. Let's take a look at solution one. Assalamualaikum. Dosto, kita ko bor. Uto, aao. Tumhara log gola gole kore, tumhara log tumhara shogu bor ekta asa aao. Yeh dakka dukka maro kita be aavar kita, aavar kita. Shoi log ondo orin no no shogale gushol shol koriya ilam. Kito ilo thora akki thala. Ibabi kita ko thei bar hoyi lei sunni na kita. Moshkari na kuka. Dekha na bishesh nai bai. मन कर देखा एक कंपनी इतना डिपॉजिट करती है आज के तरह वहाँ और ईमेल दिया कॉन्फ़िर्मेशन करते हैं आगामी खाली तरह दुई टा रोबोट्स अमरा रोनो डिलीवरी कितना कौन है भाई जी ओए तो अगले तो अमरा ये डिलीवरी ड्राइवर के प्रॉब्लम का सॉल्व होएगा लो रोबोट दिया व्यवस्था फालो सॉल्व हो वो सरप्राइज दी वाला क्या अपना रहत Now on to our award ceremony. Let's have a quick recap of the live shows and how the contestants battled it out.
you can see, today we are uh, recording the Catering Circle semi-final cook-off training. We have six students all together and they will be fully trained from six different participants. Uh, we have mentor here today, we have uh, judges, chef judges to judge. Today the dishes are very creative, the industry need those trend-setting dishes to survive and make maximum GP and the Catering Circle program will show the full life cycle. Welcome live to the Restaurant Star Show Finals. My name is Tanya Rahman and I'll be your host. It's about that connection that we made with, uh, with our customers. It's beautiful and healthy. By supporting local businesses, I was actually building a link. Three fishes for the finalists. I can see the market is changing into creative dishes. Fish is coming on the menu. People are much more inclined to try something new. They need to think about VAT, corporation tax. Fish can be quite expensive. Come up with something that's quite unique. They reach the wider community. Something uh, very, very uh, needed in the market. Once they can get that, understand that concept, they can then realise that they can put these dishes up. You can charge higher costs because it's so niche and it's so health conscious. And that drives business like never before. How will you reach, you know, take it out to the mass? What type of investment they need and whether that is feasible, how would you roll it out? He's created that buzz in the town. But he's a very clever businessman. British ingredients, there's Bangladeshi ingredients, there's a fusion like us. It's not the item itself which is unique, it's what we do with it. I think trend is very key. The whole concept of Catering Circle is to solve a problem. The love that they have for their dishes, they're very proud of their dishes. How would you actually bring out the exemplary to the local neighbourhood? I think your dish, very clever, very versatile. Yeah. Well, we've got the results now for this final round point, so congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, we now arrive at a very exciting part of the evening, the awards ceremony, where we will find out the two finalists of the star show and who was ultimately crowned the star winner. Please welcome on stage our VIPs to hand out the award, Absana Begum MP, Member of Parliament for Poplar and Limehouse, Professor Dr. Sanawar Chowdhury, Director RCI, Lutfur Rahman, MD, Work Permit Cloud, and Tovazul Mia, who is a mentor. Welcome to you all. So now we have them all on stage. Congratulations to our winner, Tajwa Shalim from Viceroy of Windsor and his dish, Kasundi Scallops. Tajwa was the winner of the talent show in season four and a finalist in season seven star show. Welcome and congratulations.
sauce. The sauce is very. Um, it's, it's a bit of mustard, but it's not too strong. So, this is an amazing combination with the scallops. I think this is one well, like, yeah, a signature dish. It's really nice. The fact they've combined the crab claw with the uh, scallop is perfect. Absolutely incredible. I had a great time in Windsor. If I had to describe my time there, I'd use one dish that I had. It was the grilled sesame scallops. It was rich, it was sophisticated, and it was fresh. Alaikum, thank you all, good evening. Um, it's been definitely a big journey. Um, I'm not going to make it like the Oscars and thank everyone, but I'll thank my parents, uh, thank Catering Circle and Channel S and all the sponsors for today. And lastly, I'd probably say this journey I started in 2019 and then coming to think about it, we were competing with each other. But now here in 2023 with my colleagues now, I've learned so much, grown so much and just found new ways of tackling very hard issues and I'm very thankful for that opportunity. So thank you all, appreciate it. Congratulations, thank you. Thank you very much and congratulations again. Now please welcome our VIPs to hand out the next award, Salim Chowdhury, President of the BBCA, Andre Walker, Presenter of Talk TV, Abdul Bari, MD at the Royal Regency, and Helal Malik, who is a mentor. Welcome to you all. Now please congratulate our next winner, Jasim Hussein from Shoreditch Fish and Chips and his dish, salmon and calamari. Jasim was the winner of the talent show in season four and a finalist in season seven star show. than the usual um, takeaway options. Um, my wife loves it. Um, my mother-in-law loves it. She's 83. It's the only thing she'll eat. Oh, the salmon is good for my health. I can do three times a week. It's perfect. The unique taste of the smoke on the salmon is just amazing. And the health benefits, man. I get it like three, four times a week. Absolutely love it. And it's a great deal with like calamari and that. So certainly recommend it. Assalamualaikum everyone. Alhamdulillah, thank you for this. Uh, look, this trophy is bigger than the one I got last time. Uh, look, no, on a serious note, last three years, um, it's been immense. We've learned a lot. We've built some great relations. And then COVID hit. And then Catering Circle done some shows about uh, guiding us through the COVID period. And look, we're still here, standing here with this. So thank you everyone. And look, being on such a platform with Channel S, you do get a lot of recognition. May Allah give barakah in all our businesses. And let's keep that in mind and keep growing, inshallah. Well, we've seen him in action now. Please welcome our VIPs to hand out the next award. The last award, Her Excellency Saida Muna Tasneem, Bangladesh High Commissioner. 
Shampa Roy Mukherjee, Associate Professor at the University of East London, Abdul Haig, Vice Chair of Channel S and founder of the Catering Circle, and Zia Chowdhury, who is a mentor. Welcome to you all. And please welcome our winner to the stage, Jalal Saeed from the Taj Tandoori, and his winning dish, Mackerel Three Ways. Jalal was the winner of the talent show in season four and is tonight's star winner of season seven, Restaurant Star Show. Congratulations. Uh, hit the spot really. I also thought the fish cake balanced everything out. Uh, you had the spice from the rice and the sauce was on the mackerel um, and the fish cake The fish cake sort of brought that down um, and it had a different texture. Serving the sauce in the uh, in the little tin that said tomato soup and also popping open the can with the fish cake inside that was a nice surprise. Right fish was very tasty, it was juicy, flaky and full of flavour and um, it was accompanied with this um, fish cake that I really liked. It was very crunchy and gave additional flavour. It, it was different in flavour than the fried fish. Welcome everyone. Um, first and foremost, I'd like to uh, thank Allah for giving me such a great honor like this and we're deeply humbled. Um, and uh, yeah, congratulations to the other finalists as well and uh, especially brother Jasim as well. He's an amazing guy and has equally deserving of this award, brother. So uh, savvy business with him. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, and I'd like to thank um, Catering Circle. They've, uh, They've been amazing. They've been working tirelessly in the background and uh, the amazing work that they do is, uh, is fantastic. And uh, yeah, and I'd also like to mention, you know, like my family, the support I've had from my family, their duas, their love, and uh, also like in particular my brother who's been my rock and my support. I mean, Saeed, who everyone knows and loves very much. And uh, another special mention to my mentor, dear friend and confidant, Mr. Ziao Chowdhury down there. So he's been uh, amazing as well. And uh, those of you that know us um, and whoever's watched the show closely know that um, I lost, we lost our father a couple of years ago and nine months today we also, my mother returned to her creator. So we'd like to dedicate this award to my uh, mum and dad and, uh, and uh, just ask everyone to keep them in your du'as and thoughts. Thank you very much everyone, thank you. Jalal, thank you so much and congratulations again. I want to bring you another solution by the Catering Circle executive members. Have a quick look at this video. Food's ready, it's all there for you. Enjoy your meal. Thanks thank again. you. What's this? I've placed a big order and there are no plastic bags? What's going on? That's not the case, in fact. Hold on. The containers aren't even plastic. This is unacceptable. I'm not coming back to this restaurant again. I'm going to make sure it's a negative review. Allow me to explain. We're just following with the new law. New law? It's a new law that's coming into place in October. We're not allowed to use plastic containers, cups, cutlery, food containers anymore. What? Yeah, obviously with plastic, it's a significant threat to the environment because only 10% is recycled. Apologies, I didn't know that. What we're trying to do here is be eco-friendly, do our part for the environment. 
and make sure that all our other fellow restaurateurs do the same? Fantastic. Again, I didn't know about this. I'll make you go on your good deed and we'll try this at home. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank Let's you. save the planet together. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for our panel discussion now. I think I've made you all nervous at the thought that you still have to wait for your dinner, but this is really interesting and it's actually why we're here, a key part of why we're here, because this event gives you the opportunity to hear a lot of important advice and insight into what's going on in the industry. So please welcome our panel guests, Professor Shampa Roy Mukherjee, an Associate Professor in Economics and Director of Impact and Innovation at the Royal Dock School of Business and Law at the University of East London. Andre Walker, a former advisor at the House of Commons and European Parliament and London City Hall. He was the Downing Street correspondent for the New York Observer and then became a presenter on talk television on primetime Saturday night. Her Excellency Saida Muna Tasneem is the 20th Bangladesh High Commissioner to the UK and the first woman to hold the position. She's also the ambassador to Ireland and Liberia. David Living, who's a founder and director of Seeds Consulting. He has 30 years experience with UK and international food and retail businesses as a director, as well as being a master franchisee for an international food franchise. Ladies and gentlemen, if I could please ask for a bit of hush um, for our distinguished guests, thank you. Thank you very much all for being with us. Great to have you here this evening. Um, Shampo, if I can start with you first of all. Uh, the Bank of England's job is to maintain the stability of the economy. Are they taking the right steps at the moment to curb inflation, as we've seen with interest rates going up and up and up over the past few months and probably more rises to come? So in terms of um, our current inflation um, and um, the Bank of England's response uh, with raising its interest rates, that's having a um, quite a significant impact on hospitality industry, um, it's having a kind of a double-pronged impact. Uh, first of all, um, consumer uh, us because they're having to pay um, higher mortgages, uh, their discretionary spending um, is um, <coughs> being affected and therefore they're spending less in, uh, on hospitality and uh, leisure activities. Um, that's one thing. And the second thing is that um, higher interest rates mean uh, that uh, businesses are not able to um, avail loans or uh, invest in their businesses because of the high cost of borrowing. Um, another uh, uh, thing that's happening um, to the hospitality industry at the moment is that the, some of these businesses have taken loans during COVID and now it's kind of payback time and with high interest rates that's kind of um, impacting their debt uh, as well the level of debt they are in so um, although the bank of england's response to the rising inflation um, is will be automatically to rise interest rates um, the impact that it's having on the hospitality in industry is um, quite a negative one Okay, thank you. Just before we carry on our panel discussion, I want to show a video by Channelus, um, which is talking about the cost of living crisis. Let's play that video. Brexit, Corona Mohamari, Airport Russia Ukraine Judho, Shop Milie Britain Air Orthonitir Bishal Chondopoto. British pound has fallen to its lowest level ever against the US dollar. Shomproti abaro bedeche inflation rate. Ja kina bigoto 45 bochorer moddhe shorboccho porjaye pouncheche. Orthonitir emon talmatal obosthay sobche beshi khotigrosto hoyeche car industry. Shoto bochorer purono oitijjobahi British Bangladeshi car industry tar joulush harate bosheche. লাগামহীন ঘোড়ার মতো ছুটে চলা গ্যাস বিল বিদ্যুৎ বিলের উচ্চ মূল্যের জাতা করলে পৃষ্ট রেস্টুরেন্ট মালিকরা রেন্টেড হইলো আপনি মনে করেন 127000 পাউন্ড ইয়ারলি এর পরে প্রতি তিন মাস পর পর বিআইটি गवर्नमेंट কে বেড দিতে হয় 12 13000 পাউন্ড এই যে হাই স্ট্রিট গুলো এই যে হাই রেন্টেড বিজনেস গুলো এখন যে সেল হচ্ছে এইভাবে সেল হলে চলবে না 
खबर मेनुर दाम बृद्धि स्टाफ कस्ट सह आनुषांगिक हिसेब मिलाते ना पे बंद हो गए असंख्य रेस्टुरेंट अने के आर व्यवसा परिवर्तन चिंता भावना कर विद्युत गति बृद्धि पावा दामे जख व्यवसाय ना विश्वास व्यवसायी तक स्रुतर विपरीते शक्त पाए दाड़ी से किुष्ठान अर्थनीतर यह संकटमय समय कस्ट कमिए मेनू प्राइस क्यों बाढ़ानो जाए सबकिछ हिसेब मिलिए समय उपयोगी सिद्धान नीते पर घुरे दाड़ानो सम्भव मन करें विशिष्ट जनरा As far as I'm concerned, it's about time the hospitality industry gets some proper serious help and money. Because of the amount of money the curry industry brings to this country, I think it's high time the government put their hands in their pockets. অপার সম্ভাবনার এই কারি ইন্ডাস্ট্রিকে টিকিয়ে রাখতে সরকার কিংবা বিরোধী দল সবাই একই কাতারে তারা অবশ্য মনে করেন এই ইন্ডাস্ট্রি ব্রিটিশ ঐতিহ্যের সাথে অতপ্রতভাবে জড়িত তাই এই দুর্দিনে সবাইকে এক হয়ে কাজ করার আহ্বান রাজনীতিবিদদের ট্রেনিংমিক doesn't mean you stop your support government has to have a competitive tax base you will get the payback later because you'll have businesses to survive kobe shabhabik hobe abar sob kichu sarkar ki ado ei industry r jonno guruttopurno podokkhep nebe emon proshno hajaro restaurant malik der So our next question Andre is to you do you think the industry's recovered post covid and does it matter that a lot of indian restaurants are closing Well let let me tell you something I think that we have learned something haven't we during the covid lockdown we've learned that our communities need to get together that families want to see each other that people want to celebrate birthdays they want to celebrate important occasions and for decades the heart of every community in this country has been the indian restaurant business run by bengalis and bangladeshis like yourselves i genuinely believe that this industry is in i could just shout quite loudly i don't care um i believe that this industry is in significant danger and what i want to say to you and you your excellency i want to offer an apology on behalf of the media on behalf of the polit- politicians on behalf of the government of this country for the fact that we have not sorted out some basic problems business rates are far too high vat is wiping you out and the immigration problem that we're suffering from is a complete disaster because we are treating people coming over working in bangladeshi restaurants as if they were benefit claimants and therefore they're not able to come into the country my my final comment more than anything else is that we've got to say to ourselves this is not just a restaurant industry this is the center of every town every village and every city in the united kingdom You are there when our children are born you are there when our relatives die and the idea that that simply disappears cuts even more deeply than the damage it will do to you personally and economically and by the way I do agree with my colleague from Channel S when he says that um, bread that a curry is the bread and butter of Bangladesh it's the bread and butter of my house as well I have it breakfast lunch and dinner but I will tell you What is more important than the curry is the community. You are our community and it is vital we protect you. And I pledge on behalf of Talk Television that we will work harder at doing that. Andre, thank you. 
Your Excellency, to you now, what do you think the government should be doing? Well, first of all, I'd like to congratulate all the winners of the uh, catering circle. Thank the catering circle for calling me here in Channel S. Um, your question was, what can the British government do? Um, well, first of all, I'd like to pay a tribute to the uh, founding fathers and the pioneers of curry industry in the United Kingdom, which is from my community, from Bangladesh, and I paid a salute to them for still sustaining this industry the way it is right now, so contemporary. So, you know, it's, 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 it's a contemporary cuisine now, and you know, the way the media is covering it is also very contemporary. So I think that it is in the interest of the UK government uh, to sustain, to provide all our support to the uh, British curry industry, particularly given that you know it employs more than 100,000 people, and we know there are nearly 12,000 restaurants and uh, you know contributing 4.5 billion US dollars to the British economy. So from every perspective, uh, Prime Minister Rishi Sunak, uh, the industry can appeal to him. When he was the uh, Chancellor of the Exchequer, he actually provided all our support during the COVID pandemic time. He cut down the VAT and taxes, he provided furlough support and all other business support. And I think what we didn't have in COVID is that we didn't have a Ukraine war and a global energy crisis. We didn't have our bills, energy bills go three times higher. We didn't have um, a crisis like uh, cost of living. I was just speaking to somebody from the, from the industry, he's saying that, you know, three kinds of uh, spices and essentials of a curry industry is that onions and garlic. The prices have gone out three times. Now, in a European cuisine, you just put one clove of garlic. But in a Bengali cuisine or an Indian cooking, you, put, you have to put a whole garlic. So it's very expensive. And plus, you know, the catering industry or the curry industry, they have to keep their ovens on, their cookers on. And the energy price is just unbelievable. It's unmanageable. Plus, they have establishment costs, rentals, mortgages. So cost of borrowing has gone up, interest rates have gone up, so it is, inflation's at the highest, it's 7% right now. So definitely, with Prime Minister Rishi Sunak now at the Premiership, with Jeremy Hunt, now the Chancellor of the Exchequer, I think the curry industry could have a dialogue with Mr. Jeremy Hunt and seek all out support, because the curry industry is the cultural diversity of the United Kingdom. Uh, you know, we had the Muslim Bengali chefs who came from Bangladesh and Silat and landed in Dockland and opened up these restaurants. And we must, they, they add so much um, diversity to the cuisine and the culinary, you know, diversity of the United Kingdom. So I appeal to the UK government to do much more during the post uh, Ukraine war energy crisis. Because today we have a cost of living crisis where every day one restaurant is closing down. This is the statistics, and this is a fact, that small and medium restaurants are closing down. Every day, one restaurant. So we, I, on behalf of uh, you know, uh, the High Commission and our community and the catering circle and the curry industry, I appeal to the British government to provide all our support. Okay, Your Excellency, thank you. <laughs> David, you've been waiting patiently. It's your turn. If you were to invest in this industry, in this business now, where would you focus? I think the most important thing uh, that I've heard tonight is all about innovation. Um, and I'm actually really impressed with uh, not just the winners of, of the prizes tonight, but actually the way in which the Bangladeshi community has come together. And in particular, you know, the way in which you actually are adapting and pivoting, some people might say, especially during these hard times. I think that's the way to go. Um, you know, when it comes to all the areas relating towards cost space, um, I'll give you an example. One of the interesting things I saw actually on the clips tonight was not just the innovation, but even some of the winners won, uh, which had fish dishes. Now, if you look at the price of fish dishes, for instance, uh, fish as a product uh, which has gone up astronomically over this last period of time. I'm thinking to myself, these guys have been creators, but at the same time, they're under incredible pressure because they've come up with something great, but it's cost them double what it cost them a little while ago. So, um, uh, just to give you a little bit of background, so I, I go in and audit businesses, and the one thing I would say to you is running a business needs to, nowadays, especially what's going on, has to have tremendous skill set in all parts of their business to understand it very well and keep on top of it. 
And I would say that's one area which is really critically important because, you know, inflation prices, utility bills, all those sort of things, none of us have ever been used to it. It's not something which was happening, you know, back in the day. So all I would say is, you know, uh, keep the innovation, keep and understand your business very well. Keep your cost control really under control, or at least, you know, make sure that you understand the cost of goods, the selling price, the margins, your staff costs, all of the, all of that. Because um, as a catering industry, the systemization of businesses in many other categories is probably has been seen. In this industry, it's not always been a systemized business. And what I mean by that, it's been run by fantastic entrepreneurial people. So systemizing will make effectively more money, I think, for your businesses. And innovation will keep it uh, in the interests of your, your customers. So I think those are the key areas. If I was to give any tips, just keep control of that, those areas. Innovation and really making sure you understand it. One of the things that I think as a, as a community is understanding all your benchmarks. If you really, as, as an industry and in your, your, your sector, really can benchmark, understand where am I compared with everybody else? Because what I've loved hearing tonight was so many people who were happy and willing to share their ideas, their suggestions, where their business is. And this tells me everything about what I've seen this evening within the community. So that's where I'd focus it on. All right, thank you. We've got a few minutes um, to open it up to the floor for questions. So if we can have, probably have some questions for our panelists. My, my question is to my esteemed colleagues, my peers, and especially the panel. We've had over 200,000 signatures that were made towards uh, the VAT reduction but nothing has been done. It's something that our community has been fighting for over the last 10, 15 years. And every award show that we come to, this has always been brought up. It seems like a dirty word in our industry and our government is doing nothing to help us. So really, the question is to you guys, what can you do and, and, and how can we get the VAT reduced to 10%. Shampa, that might be one for you. Can anything be done? Um, it's, a, it's a very relevant and valid point with regards to VAT. And um, till um, July of 2022, VAT rates were low for hospitality industry um, to support it during the COVID era. However, um, uh, at the moment, well, the government policy doesn't seem to be um, shifting in terms of lowering of any taxation at all, um, because it's, um, it is in a financial pickle itself. Um, it, it's fiscal deficit, it's debt, um, and I'm not sure whether it's in the position to be able to lower that VAT, but it can support the hospitality industry in other ways. Um, bring back the grants, lower the rates, um, and there, there's several other in incentives or initiatives that the government can introduce uh, other than the VAT. Uh, I don't think ideologically this government is going to reduce taxes Definitely not before the, the um, elections. That's my view. Okay, thank you. I think we're going to move on to another question. A gentleman over here, if you just say who you are and if you've got a person you'd like to answer your question. Asalaamu As Alaikum. Uh, my name is Abdul Hai, Pipasha Restaurant, Cambridge. Um, I would like to ask a question on what is your opinion of the long time viability of the hospital industry, hospitality industry. Okay, thank you. Who would like to say that, Andre? I'll have a go. Yeah. Well, I mean, the reality is you're being pushed out of it, aren't you? 
Uh, the reason that your industry survives at the moment is that many people across the country own the restaurants that they operate, as in they own the freehold. You know, the idea that you're going to have somebody like Shemshul Shalim come along from Bangladesh, you know, aged 18, and buy a restaurant in this country is just fanciful. It's never going to happen ever again. So every single restaurant that we lose that's an Indian restaurant, it will not be replaced. And so I think that this is a catastrophic situation, which is why I started my comments by saying we have to remind this country that it's not just about curry, it's also about community. And if, the, if you guys all lose uh, your restaurants, then all you're going to do is have all of those buildings redeveloped into flats, which will make you personally relatively wealthy, but we will lose that part of our community in this country. And I think that's a devastating blow to every man, woman and child in the United Kingdom. So I'm terrified for the business, but goodness me, it's fantastic we're getting together. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for that panel discussion. Thank you. Now, just before we draw things to a close, we've got another um, solution for you to have a look at just behind me on the screen, brought to you by the Catering Circle Executive Members. Let's take a look. Now, I'm going to go to the next one. 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 अच्छा बंदो, हमें तुम्हारे लोगे फोरे आलाप कोरी प्लीज, हमारे शेफे किता खोए रहा है, जाने वेरी वेरी आर्जेंट। कितो इसे शेफ? भाई साहब, ये आफ्टर आपने हमारे बेथन दिला दूसरे पाउंड हॉब। लोगे गैस और एक टा बील आपने दो रहिया दिला। तामी बुझ दाम ना भाई साहब, लेकिन किता लगे आपने � Come on, order it. Order for it again to the Hawaii. There are any Hoya Masturi at two quay. I'm not so la dio. You say, Chef, E. Barner of Albeham, a hellag is a lie. Hoka sign. By Zap, you're still bad over the order. I mean, far time like still bad over the Gunon Hotam. Them no I do not do the Marangulo Gunos of Tivayana. Are to rather the Bila Yavita, Kitawi. अहोन बुच्चे नहीं शेफ। जो अहोन बुच्चे। देखो का इमाशो अमार सब बिशोफोन गैस बिलाई सी। ये लगी आफना रे अमी दूसरोफोन फाइन कर सी। खारोन आफने एवं आफना टीमे जेतु वेस्ट कर रहा गैस आकी। जुदी न आफना रा सेव करोन। Not only it will save my business, it will save the whole mankind। खारोन गैस अमरा बनाई ना। It comes from nature. Sorry, Gabna, I don't know. If you have a guest saved, then you will be secure in the future. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Chef, what's up? I'm going to go to the next one. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Mahi Ferdas Jalil, the founder of Channel S. Please give him a warm welcome. Assalamu alaikum. Atske British Horkareu Matunje Khoinje, four billion pound in industry that can contribute to it. It's a hard luggage, I'm a luggage, and I'm a bath of the luggage. अमरा बाप तो तल्लगी ये इंडस्ट्री आज के फोर बिलियन पाउंड कंट्रीब्यूट करिया अमरा पृथ्वीबीर कोनो देश हो गया कोनो जातीर खाने बोध लनी हुई सिने अमरा बाप तो तरा आया ये ब्रिटिश फिश एंड चिप्स और जातीरे चिकन टिक्का मसला तरा नेशनल डिश पानी हुई सिना हुई सिना आमी आश्चर्य ये क्रेटिंग कारण तारा खारो नहीं किंतु ये इंडस्ट्री एको ने एक साथे रोई से एवं स्पेशली शेफों को लोगों को इतनी बात कारण तारा 
খানি রান্নার কারণে ওট আওয়াজ খাম করার কারণে গরো বাবিন বা চিন্তার কষ্ট দেওয়ার কারণেই কিন্তু এইটা আমরা দৌড়িয়ে রাখতাম পারছি টু থাউজেন্ড সিক্স পারপোলায় দ্য ফার্স্ট বাংলাদেশি হিসাবে হাজার হাজার রেস্টুরেন্টে আর এম এস দিয়ে সাহায্য করছেন সো আমি আবার একটু অভিনন্দন জানাই দিব মিস্টার হাঁকরে আব্দুল হাঁকরে যে তাই এটা করার কারণে কিন্তু অনেক সমস্যার সমাধান হয়েছে কিন্তু আমরা যদি সময়ের সাথে আমরা পরিবর্তন না করি তাইলে কিন্তু আমরা এই গৌরবর অর্জন দৌড়িয়ে রাখতাম পারতাম না আর এর লাগি কেইটারিং সার্কেলর জন্ম যে তোমার তারা টেকনোলজির সাথে থাকবা যুগর সাথে থাকবা সময়ের সাথে থাকবা আজকের অনুষ্ঠানে আপনারা যেভাবে যারা পুরস্কৃত হয়েছে তারা সবরে অভিনন্দন পুরস্কার হচ্ছে যে হয়েছে যে গুণীজনরে সমাদর করা আমরা যে সোসাইটি গুণীজনরে সমাদর করতাম নাই ইনো আর গুণীজন ক্রিয়েট হইতো নাই আপনারা সব পালা থাকবা আমরা এই দোয়া করবা ইনশা আল্লাহ আবারও দেখা হইব আসসালাম আলাইকুম Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much to all our guests, to you guys, our audience, our curry houses, and the fantastic team behind tonight's show. A big thank you again to our sponsors. Asian cuisine so we understand the struggles the hurdles that a lot of our our competitors and colleagues are going through so we're happy to be part of this um, celebration and get together we're all in the same boat so we all have to be here supporting each other the only way we can get the right gp to save the industry is to create our own dishes that we can compete with the next door all signature dishes or all favorites like chicken tikka masala and those kind of things so we have created over the last few years 20 different dishes signature dishes and they're there with high margins and there is hardly any competitions and that's the way they could charge and make great gp and we have awarded one winner after two three years of battle today we have awarded them as a British Bangladeshi MP, this year I'm taking back the message that I've listened to today. A lot of people are calling for um, reduction in VAT. A Hong Kong State government, as a Tory government, we see that um, taxation can do lower on that. Taxation is 
iron and VAT is still at 20%. I don't know yet my party's policy in this area. I know in the last 25th of the Labour Party, we did have a pledge to not increase the British Bangladeshi community is backbone of the car industry. This is backbone of the country. The British Bangladeshi community by 1 million. The mainstay support of the community is the car industry. The alternative incentive is the subsidies. The business support is the VAT. The immigration is the same.